Uh, welcome, friends, to the first guest of the Pixel Boss podcast, where we speak to individuals that are synergizing the relationship between Web 2 and Web 3, a Web 2.5 audio experience. Today, we're happy to invite, and we are gracious with the time of Franco Torres. Franco is the Identity Creators and 27 Media Manager, um, co founder, more so, and co founder of GM Avenue, a Web 3 new initiative. He's in business strategy. He's a creative director, creative director, and visual storyteller. Franco, welcome to the Pixel Boss podcast. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you for having me here. Uh, for me, it's a it's a pleasure. As you can tell, I'm really excited. Um, <laughs> this is the first one, so I'm just like it's all it's all built up to this moment, Ivan. Ivan, how are you feeling? This is the first Pixel Boss podcast. Having a guest on, how are you feeling? Oh, I'm nervous. No, I'm joking. <laughs> no, it's awesome. Look, you know, it, I'm, I think that podcasts speak for themselves. I mean, it gives you every, everyone the ability to uh, sort of, you know, pick and choose what they love and what they don't love. Um, and yeah, so I'm keen to sort of start to, to roll out what we want to do in the space. Um, and and just the, the best thing about doing a podcast is how we're going to be able to collaborate with people locally, but also internationally. Uh, and that's that's a beautiful thing when it comes to storytelling, community, and building in this wild 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 west of Web three. And for our Pixel Boss friends that are tuning in, each week we're having different guests with different topics, and this week's topic is around Web three storytelling. And the reason I decided to choose this topic to start off and kick off is because I believe through every NFT project and Web3 project that we have seen, mm -hmm. we know that the one thing that sticks, the one thing that allows Board 8 Yacht Club to be Board 8 Yacht Club is because of the story and narrative that is playing out from a macro standpoint. Same with CryptoPunks. Franco, Web3 storytelling, before we dive into the depths of Web3, why don't you explain your journey of where you first heard about it, what got you interested in the first place? Yeah, I came across uh, crypto actually in 2017 um, and I didn't I didn't know anything about, a friend of mine introduced me to it. Um, and then, you know, all the, all the conversations were happening through Facebook groups <laughs> um, and the conversations were like, they were using a lot of jargon and, and, and a lot of like coding, which I didn't understand at that time. So I kind of like, I didn't pay attention and I sold for profit, which I thought it was a lot. I, I wish I kept that, those Bitcoin uh, I got at that time, but no, I didn't. Um, and then I, I went back to the, to the space in early 2021 uh, when I started hearing about NFTs. Um, I'm a creative person with commercial background, so um, that's why I got interested in it. Uh, first, from a creative side, but also from the commercial side, because I'm always, you know, my mind is in between those two. So um, that's how I got back to into it, and and I was already uh, managing my uh, marketing agency in Web two, uh, doing mostly branding projects and um, web dev projects. Um, also, I, I started doing a lot of uh, filmmaking and, and photography. And then I met Sam, which is my co-founder um, from uh, GM Avenue, um, who he's a lot in sales and I'm in a lot, a lot in marketing. So we both so we, came together. Yeah, we came together. Um, and he, he, he kind of like have a similar story. Um, he got into 2000, in the space into 2017. So you, um, you guys have essentially changed your whole business model now with GM Avenue, being that you guys have come from strategy marketing. Like why did you decide to change the whole business model? Like what opportunity have you seen as a creative director and as an artist yourself to dive into it? Yeah, we've seen, so our idea is to unify marketing and sales. We've seen that there is a, a kind of like a detachment between those two, you know, m marketing and sales never got along in any company uh, in Web2. So we try to unify that and utilize blockchain technologies to, to, to help doing that basically. And I know you've got a background in photography and you, you have a collection out at the moment 
Yeah. Um, tell, I guess, the person that's listening that is a photographer, an artist, a creative in general, why you've decided to use the power of blockchain. I want I say that very basic. It's a very basic level mm-hmm. question, but it'll provide emphasis on the larger story that you are building. Yeah, well, f- first of all is the the IP rights, you know, like you, you once you launch your your uh, NFT project, uh, you can get royalties for life for your work when before you couldn't do that because there was a middleman that was getting a, a piece of the pie. Um, there still is because there is a platform where you have to uh, mint those, right? But um, basically when I got into the NFT space in 2021, um, I started learning a lot. I started just connecting with people, learning, listening, um, and I did nothing for about a year until then I released my NFTs. Um, There was a lot of resistance from my end, like personal. Um, I don't know why, maybe because I was too attached to the project because it was a project that um, basically the photography NFT project that I that I launched is a, a photography uh, project I did in Papua New Guinea. So I got the chance to work with the Papua New Guinea uh, tourism entities, the government, and uh, basically they flew me there. Um, I documented a couple of uh, different tribes mm-hmm. um, and I was very careful you know, before launching, I was very careful on the approach I was gonna take because yeah, it's a- Sure, it's indigenous. It, 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 exactly. Indigenous and it's a tribe and the, the photos are fan- phenomenal. Yeah, thank you, thank you. So um, I think that took me, uh, that added a lot of resistance from my end. But then I decided to, instead of talking about the, the tribes, talk more about the feeling behind every photo. Um, so that's what it is. You can find it as concepts of culture um, on foundation. Um, and just touching on that really quick, provide a quick overlay. So we know for anyone that is looking to buy NFTs or get into the space, OpenSea yeah. is clear, clearly mm-hmm. a vehicle kit to get into. Why did you choose to go down foundation? How does a person get into a place like foundation? Um, I believe now, y- Anyone can get into it. At uh, at that time, you had to be invi- invited yeah, into it. Stages. Yeah, early stages. So I got invited from from someone into into the platform. Um, to be honest, it depends on the target market that you want to focus on. Um, foundation was a little bit more exclusive at that time, so you could put like higher prices. Uh, not anymore. Like there are and other platforms uh, like Super Rare or some others. Um, and yeah, I just basically compare, you know, um, and did an analysis of the different platforms. Um, but if I have to, you know, suggest something to someone that it's getting into it, it's just learn about, you know, listen uh, to different people, um, take the time to learn. And once you feel ready, just go ahead. like. Don't dwell, don't hesitate, just uh, do it. And another thing that I should recommend is build community first. Um, don't launch a project and then try to push it and, and find the community. Build expectations first. Um, build uh, a community, you know, that's what, through storytelling, which we, we're gonna attach that. So. Through storytelling is, it's been used by companies for years, like mm. Nike, Coca-Cola, uh, you know, 95% of the population of the world knows about what Coca-Cola is. 97% knows about what Nike is. That That is not done overnight. That's, that's through branding and storytelling. You know, when you open a, a Coca-Cola in, in every advertisement of Coca-Cola, when they open the bottle, there is a tss. when you when they drink it, there is a ah. <laughs> you know that's that's pure storytelling. That's pure storytelling, and then the the message will change depending on campaigns, right? So the same you should do as a personal um, brand. 
you have to treat it in the same way, not at, at that scale, but in the same way, the way you dress, the way you present yourself, the way you speak, um, there has to be some coherence. It's extremely intentional too. Yeah, exactly. So within that web two storytelling uh, and web three storytelling, what do you think are the main differences? I know you, I know you just touched on community and building that first. Mm -hmm. What do you think are the other key differences or principles that must be attained? If you just touched on the principles, but the, I guess the key differences. I think the key difference are in the, who has the power here. Um, you know, now the narrative is changing because the, the community, the fans, the NFT holders, the um, however you wanna you wanna call them, uh, they now have power. So now creators like writers, artists, um, painters, you know, whatever type of creator, they now have the power to to co-create with a, a brand, uh, cooperate and and you know define the narrative you know um there is a there is an example um there is a comic uh warner brothers i think they launch or they're about to launch i think they already did um um amateur <laughs> i think they already uh launched a project um about batman i uh, can't recall the the name exactly of the nfts um, where the NFT holders, they, dis they could decide the narrative behind um, the end of the story. So they could design their own end of the, of the story and every, every single um, Batman will be released in one of the, the comic books. The same with Bored Bo Apes. Bored Apes it's great when it comes to storytelling because by giving the um, IP rights to the owners, mm. they they expanded the the storytelling. They expanded the narrative, um, and that gives more engagement to the to the project itself. Yeah, essentially allowing the the way I see it, it's allowing the Web three community and your fans and people that are engaging with the project to make decisions and they can be big decisions for the project. They mm -hmm. can be big decisions on particular IP, but they have some particular say in the direction of the project. For Gary Vee, it's a bit different. That's almost the other side, but he still listens to the community and their concerns. I think the main thing that a lot of these projects you could get wrong is when you have your ear to the ground of your community too much. Mm -hmm. And that's when you get driven by price and the floor price, Ivan for yourself. I know you have a big take on this within the Web3 space. What do you think a majority of projects are getting wrong regarding storytelling? Well, I'll just take a step back. And for me, there is no difference. Mm -hmm. There's no difference between Web2, Web3 and storytelling. Yeah. Because anyone that understands how to develop a brand, and that is your personal brand or that of mm -hmm. a product or service, is understanding your audience. And the difference between Web 2 and Web 3 is the audience get to participate differently. Mm. And the benefit is that they can, by contributing to the ecosystem as a holder, that the liquidity when they opt out is higher. So they get to benefit from the success of the project um, as opposed to just being a participant. Um, so that to me is the biggest difference, is the fact that the more you contribute, the bigger the project, the bigger the project, the more the value of the project. There's and people value things differently. Like there's plenty of projects out there that the floor price is next to fuck all, but the community is really engaged mm -hmm. and the people are forming friendships, people are forming relationships, people are building other things outside of the project based on trust and based on relationships. People need to remember that, you know, it's not just what the floor price is today. Um, and I refer that, I think most projects are, uh, are crap because most projects are built on hype. Most projects will go to zero, as they say, mm -hmm. because they don't have any value. But the value is whatever someone's willing to pay. And that's where you do have some projects that have got like floor price of say 0 0.02, and then there's, a, there's certain traits in projects that are at five. 
because the people that own that trait have gone, hey, let's all buy that trait with a hat mm. and we build our own tribe, our own community, I should say, uh, within that project. And the floor price for those traits are really high and they're moving as a team and they're creating and adding value. It's adding value to their community within the community. That's really clever. And that's their, that's how you can shift a market and how you can support something to create value. Now, if they expand that into other traits, in the mid to long term, that project will become a blue chip. Or the opposite happens where people lose interest because there's no strong leadership or really strong engagement and it does just go to zero. Mm. Like I flick through my uh, wallet, I've dropped a fucking cr- a lot of money <laughs> on a lot of really shit projects. <laughs> and um, I think we all do. <laughs> you know, I, I don't regret any of them. Yeah. I, I, I even, I even, I'm even proud of the rug pulls I've bought into. <laughs> Because it just, I, I started this journey to learn. Yeah. You know, and after learning came community and after community comes commercial. But I, I'm, you know, like going back into what we're doing at Pixel Boss, like I've spent like a year and a half of just, just craziness. Uh, I've spent the last six months on building community and now I put my money where my mouth is and I'm building a club. And I approached this guy for an absolute good reason that he's an absolute legend at what he's doing yeah. and his crew. And, and I've met, there's others in the community that are doing this with, with a long-term vision. And that's what you want at it, around the table when you're building a foundation to build projects that have been to long-term. And in terms of storytelling, you can tell whatever story you want, but if it doesn't have an undercurrent of commercial and structure, then you're fucked. And that's where, you know, at Pixelvoss, any project we do, we'll have real life utilities attached to anything that we do. Mm. If not, it's it's just, it is uh, a JPEG, you know, and there's two fundamental, in my mind anyway, this is my personal opinion. There's the projects that are there for shits and giggles. Then there's, and they're, they're fun too. <laughs> Cause I've done well at a couple of, at a couple of those. <laughs> enough so that, that it's carried a lot of the other shit stuff. But then you've got the ones that are there as genuine art and they're fucking cool. But the bulk of them promise shit they can't deliver. Mm. And that's where the problem lies. I think it's an interesting point. Um, and, you know, going back to the to the storytelling and the commercial side, I think from a, from a company perspective, I'm very interested to to hear about uh, the film industry, for example. Mm. So now, uh, you know, if you give power to the fans uh, to control the narrative, uh, you could launch a film mm. that you already know it's kind of it's kind of hit, you know, because it's been done by the people for the people, right? So. Industries like film, industries like um, the comic books, industries like uh, gaming. I there are industries I'm very interested in to to see how they evolve. Like I believe sooner or later every single industry will will get involved in in some type of blockchain technology. The yeah, well, touching on the film part, I see that playing out so well. And you, you didn't mention it's because the fa- the fans and people engage are getting what they want. With the current state, they release certain trailers or maybe certain bits, and they test the waters. Like, mm. well, what's the engagement? And then they have to do tours, so forth around the world. Now you have a, a moment in time that's coming along, and it's already been happening. People are funding these films. You have young twenty year olds that are funding a full time film ahead of them. 20 years in the, t- the traditional way yeah. and you have that fractionalized ownership that can can be doesn't have to be can be provided or even just your credit yep you release a hundred or a thousand nfts and you get your name at the end of the movie saying and uh, you supported it or you provided um the token for it that means something to people well that's that's the thing when i um when i was mentioning before you know that creators nowadays they have the power to to you know their contributions can be tracked on chain mm. and and that's very powerful because before all the nar- narrative was uh on the hands of a couple of media publishers which now that is shifting little by little by the power of blockchain and web3 
Yeah, do you see any major media changes for the space that you're operating and the strategy that you're providing? Restructure the, the can you restructure the, the question? question? I guess what are, what are the major media plays that you're seeing coming along? Maybe that's a, any social media platforms that are coming along that are interesting to you within the Web3 ecosystem? Social media, I think it's one of the industries that will keep shifting and, and, and changing. I've been using the Hive blockchain. Hive? Yeah. Interesting. Do you heard, do haven't, haven't heard. No. Um, where you basically, I think I started using it in 2020, where you basically post a photo and instead of receiving likes, you receive votes mm. and every vote has power depending on who gives the vote, mm. right? So um, same with um, a platform which is from the same uh, blockchain, which is uh, three, uh, it's three speak. Um, and it's kind of like the YouTube the decentralized. And there are a lot of people benefit, benefiting from, from it, especially people in, in countries like countries in South America or, or countries in, 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 in Asia where, um, you know, getting a hundred dollars for posting a video might, uh, be super significant. Well, what is right? the response? Cause uh, you haven't mentioned about your background is Argentinian. Mm -hmm. What's the response from your friends and family back home? Is there a lot of bars? Is there certain blockchains that they're gravitating towards? Cause obviously, ETH is considered the high premium yep. uh, blockchain um, and many people know they can't afford it. That's a, a barrier for entry for many, but now you have the Tezos community coming in. What other blockchains or platforms are you seeing people gravitate towards? I've seen a lot of people gravitate into uh, WAX uh, mm -hmm. when it comes to uh, gaming, you know, like Street Fighter, like card gaming, uh, that type of project. But, you know, Argentina is a it's a particular uh, country in that sense. Um, it's very it's very open to you know new new technologies. So you you find that a lot of um, uh, business own like Web three business owners are from Argentina. I think like the decentralized uh, uh, founders are from Argentina. Uh, the PO apps were were founded by Argentinians. Oh, really? So yeah, yeah. But still you have a lot of people that they are hesitating here in Australia, in Argentina and everywhere in the world. And I think that will be fixed with education. That's why what you guys are doing here, it's awesome. Yeah, we'll be, we're doing our best through events and we'll play that out through Pixel Boss Club and our narrative through master classes and so forth. Within what you're building and your vision for the avenue of photography and NFTs, what are you planning within that space? Um, and I, I wanted to touch on something just before that. Ivan mentioned something around utility and there's one moment where utility doesn't matter and that's that's through art, like you mentioned, yep. uh, because it's purely for the sake of buying art and we place our value behind that subjectively. But coming back to my question, what vision do you have playing out for the photography and NFTs for yourself personally? Well, I used to think that... Um we didn't have to add any specific utility apart from the, the art mm. because I come from that side. Um, and that's why I didn't do, I didn't add any utility for the NFT project that I launched apart from the art itself, which now I've been thinking uh, lately that I might, I might pan it up with the, with the, the you know, I'll, I'll, I'll reach out to the, um, tourism entities of Papua New Guinea and see if, if we can do something to give back to the community because they, the guys gave me uh, great memories actually mm. um, and but apart from that I, I already have outlined a couple of uh, NFT photography and video projects that I want to do I just been so busy in real life yeah. <laughs> uh, that I didn't have the time to, to plan it uh, right but um, yeah, I'm very interested in doing a lot related to mental health as well um, in the space. So something along those lines. And I know your new focus is your new venture of GM Avenue through strategy. What are your plans around that? Yeah. If you can share, because I know it is quite recent. I can, I can share um, 
a little bit, not too much, because we do have NDAs on, on, you know, on the table basically. But we, what we basically want to do is to unify, uh, to unify marketing and sales. So, um, you know, companies can attribute uh, their uh, investments in a in the in the best way. They can optimize their investment and see from where um, the the client, the customers, the community are engaging more. Mm. So I, su- I assume, and I'm guessing, it's a it's a some type of SaaS product which has a, like a CRM model attached, or we'll uh, you'll see shortly. We'll, we'll see shortly. <laughs> um, in terms of the storytelling, what people get wrong, what are your thoughts? You've you've been looking at a lot of NFT projects, a lot of Web three projects. Mm-hmm. There's continuous projects coming out every single day. From a from a narrative. What do you think a majority of these projects are getting wrong? What are the what are the elements that are missing? Um, I think it's you know when when the approach is blunt and it, and they are not trying to connect with people on an emotional level, I think they are missing a really important part because storytelling is basically that trying to connect with people on an emotional level. Um, and a great example of you know changing the nar- narrative and changing the, the the storytelling that I believe I went wrong is uh, this project uh, Goblins. Is it Goblins? Yeah. yeah. So you know that project was uh, a free mint, yeah. um, and I think the the floor price was at five point five ETH or something like that. <laughs> and once <laughs> I, it, it, you own one of those. I got it at the top and I got it at the bottom. So. Okay. Um, well, <laughs> look, that project was, you know, from zero to 5.5 um, because they have basically two stories, the brand story and the founders or team stories. So when it was 5, 5.5 ETH, people didn't know who were the, the, the founders. Mm. But then when the founders say, all right, this is our team, which they were actually legit, and they were they were doing great things. Uh, it was not a like you know a rug pull thing. Um, they killed the expectations, <laughs> and it went put to to ETH or I don't know what's the what's the floor price now. So I think they tried to change the storytelling when they shouldn't have done it. Mm. Um, yeah, but it also happened to be the time the whole market shut itself. Yeah. So it's 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 not completely, in my point of view, like if that was something that, I mean, if anything, that's still high compared to ninety percent of our other projects. So, but yeah, I get your point. But the same, yeah, same thing happened with Azuki when they released their founder, but he was actually involved in previous projects, and that's that was the narrative of why because he'd failed at a few others. Or look, we. We don't know who's the 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 creator of Bitcoin. I mean, we we do have a name. Yeah, which is the craziest know, thing. Which is what makes everything interesting, in my <laughs> opinion. Is. You know. It, <laughs> well, you better tell us. Is he gonna be invited me. to the podcast? No, it's, it's Banksy. <laughs> <laughs> and I know who Banksy is too. His lawyer. True story. There you go. You think so? I, I, yeah, I bet my daughter's life on it. What? That's a big call. Why do you say That's that? That's a big call, why you, why yeah. Oh, uh, well, another <laughs> podcast another day. What do you I, mean? I, you going to tease it. Quote that. All right, check this out. If anyone can be fucked, go look at, and now they're not lawyer. He's his lawyer anymore. He had a fight with himself in the mirror, I guess. <laughs> but if you look at the eyeballs of his lawyer, and then you go look at multiple interviews of Banksy in Balaclavas, Look at the eye color and the, the makeup of the color and tell me it's not true. It's the same eyeball, the same person. And they're like fingerprints. Check it out. Interesting. And hmm. I found that out through someone that I trust with my life. And then I looked into it. There you go. There's a story in itself. I want to just jump in on storytelling. And, you know, the thing that I think people need to look into is the story you put out as whatever it is that you're trying to do is super important. Uh, What's even more important is how you continue to feed that beast and to make sure you control the narrative. Yes, it's lovely that the community can build and and develop the story left, right and center and what have you, but there's all of the other layers of stories that need to be considered. Uh, 
how it lands on someone emotionally is going to depend on the intent. So one thing is to develop a story that gives you pre presence, uh, positioning, and all those th wonderful things that are important. Um, but then to make sure that your roadmap is reflecting that and that you can deliver on that. Because again, when you're writing your roadmap for a project, that, that in itself is a story. And then that has chapters and that, that has roadblocks and that has ups and downs. And then being able to ch adapt your story to to reflect on the project because what most people do is cut, shut the book and ignore the, the, the fact that they've failed or that something went wrong. And if you can adjust your story to, to be your truth, I think people are very forgiving when you're honest. It's when you lie and you're a fucking idiot yeah. that people go, you know what, fuck you, you've ruined your own story, get fucked. So if people can actually realize that humans uh, are, are really fucking nasty and that's the 1%. I think 99% of people are good people. Mm -hmm. And therefore, they will lean into whatever that went wrong. And if you communicate, you can bring it back out. Like, it's only if, you, if you're a fuckhead and you fuck people <laughs> over that you deserve fucking nothing but misery. A lot of, a lot of fucks. <laughs> no, but it's just, it's just what it is. And, you know, fundamentally, all of that is, yeah, there's a lot of swearing in that. But the, the truth is, is... People just think of when they think of story is uh, what that image says to a community on Twitter, on Instagram, what have you. It's it's all of that, but there's so much more that needs yeah. to be considered when developing a story for a project. And the basic truth is, it's a fucking business. And understand it like a business. If you if you can't treat it like a business, then you don't have the maturity to succeed. Unless you are just so fucking lucky and you come out the fucking gates and then there's people in business that support you. But, yeah. you know, there's a lot of uh, people that uh, have had huge success releasing songs that wouldn't know their ass from their fucking toe, but they're great musicians and the great people have come and supported them and they carry their management, their writing, their publishing and so forth. You know, th that's their job. Their job is to, is to make good music. And then you realize, look what's happened in the last 10 years. Again, these musicians are telling stories through their music, but they've also realized, hey, I'm more than just a storyteller through a song. I'm a fucking OG motherfucking business fucking mogul. And they're now writing plenty of stories in tech, in Disney, fashion, yeah, in food, shark. whatever. Yeah, they're sure. no longer taking the management fucking, oh, I got you 200 grand. They're like, nah, give us 3.5% and, and banking 4 million bucks. And I think Snoop is the best example for that. Yeah. Culturally, the most relevant person that has been able to stay so relevant in culture for that many is it decades now. Surely your two decades is on now. Yeah, but I guess the point there is you've got musicians that are no longer just musicians. They're, 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 they're really wired to, 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 to control their own narrative um, outside of a recording studio or being on stage. Oh, yeah. And the same thing needs to happen to anyone that wants to launch a project. And we talk keep referring to NFTs, and that's important. And I think that's it is the shiny sort of thing at the front. But anything to do with whether it be uh, tokenomics, anything to do with DAOs, anything to do with... Just going back to the pure basic of the blockchain, the, the ability like we're doing with one of our projects with Bullens, we're going to be able to track the bloodline of tigers uh, a, a, of any major um, breed that we're carrying in our in our, in our project uh, in real life, by the way. <laughs> um, and, and knowing that the province of this animal is from South Africa and be able to track it right through and back and put that on the blockchain for history to be able to manage the, 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 that particular animal into 100 300 years from now is phenomenal you know no you can't do that at the moment because you're depending on someone's computer hard drive or or, or willing to share um and you can't do that like you, you even just look at um I'm, i know it's a bit off topic from storytelling but um, that's went into the whole blockchain thing and the importance of that you look at our medical records like you can go to five doctors and none of them will know what's, what's wrong with you unless they, they they share and they don't share it's not in their interest to share but in the near future when there's a clinic group open on the blockchain where they can share and you can still protect certain privacies but the idea it's there transparent and it's 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 a beautiful thing um anyway there's um a lot to learn 
and there's a lot to to, to consider as we as we move forward. Absolutely. Let's end on a high, Frank. Any final thoughts or messages to the Pixel Bus friends? End on a high. What was that? A bag of shit. That was end on a high. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was a lot. No, I absolutely, I absolutely agree. Um, I think, as I said before, uh, blockchain will touch every single industry, um, and hopefully in a in the right way, so everything can be tracked. I think we'll we'll reach a point. Um, I don't know when. I don't know if we are going to be alive. Hopefully, yeah. Um, where basically everything will happen through blockchain. So we won't say like this is on blockchain this and this is not. It's just like, is. It's just just, is. Yeah, exactly. This is just is, you know, as, as it is. So you go to um, have, um, I don't know, a dinner party and, and when you pay the bill, the bill is actually an NFT uh, or kind of like proof of, te- of attendance. Um, and that will be on, um, on the blockchain. So I don't know, just put an example, but um, everything will be, so every industry will, will be touched by this. So sooner or later. We're excited to get you around the Pixel Bus Club in future episodes. Ivan, wrap well, it up for us, my friend. Well, I think in in the spirit of being our first ever podcast, I'll give you and the listeners a little bit of an insight into our journey because we, we don't just want to collaborate with you. We want to collaborate with anyone mm-hmm. that shares um, our love for what we want to create. Um, so in terms of Pixel Bus, the, the thing that we'll start sharing and and um, is, is obviously the people behind the project, uh, the business. So there's three founding partners um, and then there's a committee of 15. And everyone that we've picked on our committee has an out of this world uh, credentials in terms of their chosen field. Mm-hmm. And that's how we're gonna move is, is when we move into a project or a moment or a situation, it's with not just want, it's with confidence based on experience and success. Um, so hence why the first thing that we've just launched is the club and that club will be there for, for our com- community um, and there'll be different levels of, of, of memberships for that. Um, and then the agency, that's something that we, um, we're going to fuck you up, dude. I'm joking. Yes. There'll be shit that you guys do that we're not going to do and that's where we yeah. collaborate. Like, Absolutely. And that's where you go, okay, we're doing X, Y and Z and then we go, great, you now plug into our ecosystem because we don't need to do what you do. Yep. And there'll be things that we cross over on and we just pick who's doing that bit. And that's the, the ability. We had that meeting this morning with, with our, our, our partners in, in, in Queensland and, and LA is, is how we're building that out. And as an agency, we're going to be able to, to move into, whether it be in tech, agriculture, in, 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 you know, with bullens, in, in, with, with exotic animals and endangered animals, yep. right through to just cool art projects. You know? So that, that's going to be dope. Um, everything from being able to help someone scale when it comes to uh, VC funding, when it comes to legal accounting, when it comes to marketing comms, when it comes to just good old basic admin. Mm-hmm. They're the things that we're building as a team. And yeah, we'll share that with you and everyone else soon. Of course, we are already having conversations with other agencies out and other companies to to cooperate. So um, super keen and open to, to do that. And to the listeners, I just wanted to say, don't don't get fooled by by the media and by saying, hey, this is crypto is going up, crypto is going down. Like, if you really pay attention and you start networking with people, you realize that the the people that you know in this in this time is when the people are actually working and building and 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 doing great things. So just um, stay tuned. Very well said. Ignore the noise and stay focused, network. Get out there, come and say hello to the Pixel Boss Club. Ivan and myself are always open. That being said, peace and love. Let's go. Thank you very much for having me here.